I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Cisco certification training video, where today we're going to talk about the configuration register, or the config register for short. I'm going to bring up a pod of routers here in a few minutes and show you exactly how to see what this value is and how to change it, which are good skills to have for your CSYNTH and CCNA exams and job interviews, and of course working in production and especially lab environments, because sooner or later, you're going to have to perform a password recovery on a Cisco router. Now I've got some real world notes for you here in this video on that particular subject as well, but I know the first time you get ready to do one, uh, it can be a little nerve wracking. If you've never changed the configuration register, you are perhaps a little concerned about it because you've heard people like me say over and over again, if you change that register to an incorrect value, and then reload the router, you can actually cripple the router and even Cisco is not going to be able to bring it back. So there's absolutely no pressure, right? Uh, the good news is it's not hard to get this right. And what I would urge you to do, and here's that real world note I mentioned, before we look at some standard and not so standard configuration register values, you need to look up the register settings or password recovery procedures for your particular router model on Cisco's website. Uh, they change the URL from time to time, so I'm not going to put that here in the video. But if you put Cisco password recovery into Google, you'll quickly find a master document with just about every switch, access server, and router Cisco's ever made, and they give very detailed instructions on how to do a password recovery on each one of those models. Here are some of the more common configuration register settings you may have seen before. Good idea to be familiar with these for your exam. Uh, zero times, or X2102, that's the default. And what happens is with that particular setting, the router is looking for a startup configuration file in non-volatile RAM, NVRAM, and for a valid iOS image in Flash. And you know from your earlier studies that these are both default settings. Now 2142 is a setting we use occasionally if we want the NVRAM contents to be bypassed on a reload. Remember, this doesn't erase the non-volatile RAM, but it does bypass it, so your startup configuration is actually going to be ignored. And then finally, 2100, we have to use this one once in a while, and that's going to bring the router up into ROM monitor mode. So those are a couple of good settings to know, and right now, I'm going to bring up a live pod, slide that over a little bit, and show you first off how to see the configuration register setting and you do not do that with the show config register command because as you can see there is no such thing. What we do have is a command called show version which gives you a lot of information as you can see and I'm going to show you some of this from top to bottom actually because I want you to note this. You can see what particular iOS you're running. Here's the version. Uh, just keep in mind, here's the system bootstrap version that is not the same as the iOS version. Your iOS version is always going to be up here. So you can also see how long the router has been up and why it went down in the first place. We had a reload. It's going to show you where your, or where your image file was loaded from, your iOS, and the actual file name, which is this part right here. And it's going to stop about right here on an average screen. And what you have to do, of course, hit the space bar to see the rest of it. And your configuration register setting is going to be down here at the very bottom of the output of this command. So since we're in a lab environment, we're going to go ahead and change this because I want you to see something that's a little unusual for a Cisco router. And you can see the command is config-register, and now I can set it to whatever I need to. And I'm going to set it to 02100, and you could see a moment ago, that's going to boot the router into ROM monitor mode. And let's hit enter and take a look at that. And you'll notice that we didn't get any kind of message or anything, anything unusual to notify us uh, about that command or an effect it may have had. So let's run show version, and we'll go to the very bottom, and note that the configuration register value at this point is still 2102. It's a very important detail. Now obviously we would have to reload the router to get it to go into ROM monitor mode, 
But note that any change you make to the configuration register is not immediate. And the reason I bring this to your attention is that especially in global configuration mode, we're used to configuring something on a Cisco router and it takes effect immediately. But that didn't happen here. It will be OX2100 at the next reload, but you are going to have to reload the router in order to change the configuration register. We don't have to reload Cisco routers a great deal to have changes take effect, but this is one of those times where we do. So there is just a little bit of information, a good review for you if you've seen that before about the configuration register value. Again, never be nervous, especially the first time you do a password recovery and you have to work with a config register. I do strongly recommend, again, you go out to Google, do a search on Cisco password recovery, and you'll find that part of the website that covers just every single router switch and access server Cisco's ever made, and it'll show you exactly how to perform that recovery. I want to invite you out to some free webinars I'm holding at the website, 45 to 60 minute training sessions. Uh, frame Relay Fundamentals, we've got an Ether Channel webinar coming up shortly, and other topics too. You can go to that URL right there on the board, thebryantadvantage.com slash ccnawebinars.htm. You'll see the exact schedule, the times. I do them at different times throughout the day so that no matter where you are in the world, you can join me for one of these free webinars. Again, thanks for taking a few minutes to watch today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the webinars and on the website.